Dynamical systems gets especially interesting when one couples several systems together. That's what we're going to be thinking about in this chapter. Now, what do I mean by coupling? Coupling is when systems have an influence on one another. Now, what is that? Why is that so important? Let's consider a simple example. Let's take a pair of identical pendula that are frictionless, and let's see what happens when we set them both in motion. So I've got these two pendula, and I pull them back and I let them go. And because they're frictionless, they just keep swinging. But because I pulled them back different amounts, each pendulum has slightly different total energy to it. And so they're evolving with slightly different periods. Now it's frictionless, so you get periodic orbits, but eventually they're, they're just sort of drifting out of phase from one another and they're operating completely independently. This is an uncoupled system. Let's say there's no communication of energy between them and their motions are completely independent. That is an uncoupled system. If I couple these two pendula together by, let's say, hanging them from a common beam with a little bit of spring action or vibrational action between them, then what happens is that even though they started off with different initial conditions, there's a coupling. There's a communication of energy or state between the two and what one notices is that the dynamics tend to lock together or, or sync up. Now, they're not doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time, but a simple observation is enough to convince that there's some sort of influence that one system is having on another that is controlling the collective dynamics, the collective behavior of this coupled system. Now that's kind of strange, but also kind of cool. I wonder if anything like this is generalizable, useful? Yes. In fact, if we take, say, many different systems, many different pendula, and set them going with some sort of mechanism for transferring information or energy from one to another, some sort of coupling, even though it may be very weak, then what we're going to be able to argue, if not absolutely demonstrate, is that such a system can synchronize. Such a system can become completely coordinated in the end. And that's just the beginning of a whole host of interesting phenomena associated to coupled systems. Now, this is all really cool, but how do we actually analyze it? Is this something that we can deal with with what we have learned in dynamical systems so far? And the answer is no, but kind of. Connection is so important. It is what drives systems. We don't yet have enough tools to work with arbitrary coupled systems. We're really just doing one-dimensional dynamics in this volume. However, there are a few things that we can do if we start off with simple coupled systems, and that's what we're going to do next.